this wonderful one mile track in the desert last season we saw quite the event if um that's all the words that i'll use to describe that race but tonight we are here at the new phoenix new layout with uh, all the remodels all the fancy bells and whistles will be under the lights as we are just about to get set for qualifying q glad to be in the booth with you how are you today I'm doing well tonight. I'm ready to get this broadcasting started. I'm ready to officially kick off this uh, broadcast of the GGR season. I'm really excited to go back to Phoenix last season. You know, it was one of our more difficult tracks. I'm just all around pretty excited. Right. Well, I'm excited to see this race as well. New track, especially with the new dog leg. Like, that's going to be an interesting factor. Um, I believe there's really no track limits in terms of where drivers can go, where they can stay above the yellow line, below the yellow line, if they want to run the wall for all we care. It's going to be very interesting seeing where drivers go, where drivers are on the track. And I think that's going to make for quite the interesting show, especially on restarts, especially. I mean, it looks like we've got 13, 14 drivers with for today's race, I think restarts are definitely going to be an interesting factor to see people fan out four or five wide, gaining spots from about three rows back, trying to go full lead. For sure. Uh, as we see, some of our drivers are already putting down some lap times here in qualifying. Christian Visconti currently top of the board right now with a 21.091. Blake Kennedy, a strong driver and one to look out for all throughout this season. And Ryan Martin, he's got some of the uh, most wins in GGR coming out of the Pro Mazda series. So we'll be excited to see what he can do here tonight in an IndyCar. And if memory serves me correctly, I believe the winner of the Phoenix race was in fact, um, I believe that was Blake Kennedy who won the Phoenix race last year. So we could see a two-peat coming in for Blake Kennedy. I think he's really ready to defend his title here, especially at a new track with the same cars. It's going to make for a great show. Christian Descanti always a great driver seeing him up front. Ethan Harrison, the man himself, moving his way into third, bumping his way, bumping Ryan Mark now to the fourth. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, Brayson Collins, Josh Patterson, Jerry Bonkanowski, and Robert Schumacher all have not completed a lap yet. Ten drivers on track, four drivers yet to make a lap as qualifying has a minute 15 left as we speak. Last week we saw a very interesting race. Came down to the wire, actually. Josh Patterson was the man who came out on top. Last season's champion, Mr. Josh Patterson, wrapping the number one. He won a thrilling battle between himself and quite a few other drivers able to take the win with two laps to go and take home the victory at texas motor speedway hasn't laid down a lap yet but it's entirely possible he's going to be going for two races in a row one this week and i wouldn't put it past him for him to do that because he's a very good driver very excellent driver there switching teams now starting his own team with line media under a rebrand Especially with the number one, he's driving the white and orange car. Already one for one on the season. Last year's champion looking to make it two for two. Well, with 40 seconds left, unless Bob Shoemaker, Josh Patterson, or Brazen Collins put down a lap, it looks like Christian Visconti will take the pole. Not an unusual sight to see Christian Visconti up front, especially after qualifying. A very good qualifier, especially we've seen in GGR. And starting up front could benefit the number 80 driver very efficiently because he's able to control the lead once he's able to get up front. So starting up front, especially with Blake Kennedy alongside him, it's going to be an interesting front row, and I think that's going to make for some great racing, especially on the initial start. One thing to make note of as qualifying has completed, Josh Patterson, Brayson Collins, and Bob Schumacher have not completed their lap. Here's a look at our starting lineup. Row number one is going to be Christian Visconti and Blake Kennedy. 
players are going to be the drivers starting up front. Row number two, Josh or Ethan Harrison and Ryan Martin in row nine. Kevin White and Mason Suit make up row number three. Mason said he was questionable for today's race, but qualified sixth. So something to make note of is Mason. Is Mason. No, Janetta and Anthony Sharps make up row number four, the number six, and number 92, with equally impressive lap times in the two in the 21 threes. Moving on to row five, Greg Rowland in the 386 and Jay Mulder starting in 10th. Jerry Bokanowski, the last driver to put down a time, starting in row number six. Then Josh Patterson, Brayson Collins, and Bob Schumacher all did not place out of time. They start 12th, 13th, and 14th, respectively. Well, as we sit here with the cars about to roll off the grid to start this race at Phoenix, I have my keys to the race. They're going to be tire wear. Just making sure you keep those tires underneath you and making sure you play the strategy right and having those fresh sets ready. Also got to make sure that you have a cool paint scheme. As every racer knows, looking cool is half of the battle of actually racing. And the third is going to be driver fitness. We're going to be making 100 laps here tonight. And if you're not very fit, you're going to really struggle in those later laps. Exactly so. Especially last season when we saw the laps really, really start to count up, especially going under caution, really wearing down on the driver's mental state. If we see cautions, I mean, if they get if cautions breed cautions, then we might see some drivers make some mental mistakes that would typically happen, especially if we get later in the race, if we see maybe a few green-white checkers. But I agree with you. Those are going to be some great keys to the race. The weather... Right here, temperature 74 degrees in the air, track temp 75, wind speed is going southeast at 6 miles an hour, local time is just about 6 o'clock, 6.17 at night, humidity 0%, partly cloudy skies, beautiful, beautiful night here in Amdell, Arizona, just outside of Phoenix, it's the open dog leg configuration, four turns, 968 feet above the sea. And it's going to be a one-mile track. Christian Visconti, Blake Kennedy, those are your two drivers on the front row, leading them down this very long back straightaway. The pace car pulls in, but you've got a long time to wait for the green flag. Creeping, crawling, slowly inching towards the restart zone. Christian Visconti blinking in and out. Green flag is out as they hit the Geico restart zone. They're off and away. Christian Visconti, and already we have drivers in the back, and oh, multiple cars into the wall. Christian Visconti and Garrett White simultaneously hit the inside barrier, like synchronized swimmers. We had another driver in the back. That's going to bring out our first yellow of the night on lap one, and that's not good, especially for Christian Visconti or Holster. Uh, I don't know if track conditions might have changed between uh, qualifying and the race, but it looks like Christian Visconti and Garrett White just got on the uh, old throttle a little too heavily there and just spun out those tires. We saw that a little bit at Texas where we saw some drivers struggle with traction, either either uh, shifting up too quick or not shifting at all in redlining, which, spins, which spun the car out. Happened to me during one of the cautions, and... I think that might have just been happening. Whole tires and uh, fresh track state potentially could easily have been what um, caused that incident. The drivers are waiting for the pace car to pass. And Blake Kennedy is your current leader by process of elimination. Not even 30 seconds of the green flag racing, unfortunately. Well, Tyson, this is starting to look like uh, last season's race at Phoenix. Hopefully our drivers can straighten it out a bit, you know, get those uh, pre-race shooters underneath them. How excited are you to be back here at Phoenix? I'm very excited. Uh, last time I was here, I was here as a spectator watching the race from the stands. Um, I was trying to be on the booth, or trying to be in the... Um, one of the pit boxes, one of the drivers, but unfortunately wasn't able to. I was in the stands, I was watching the race, and it was fun watching from the grandstands, but I could understand all of the frustrations from all the drivers. But now I'm here in the booth, and I'm happier than ever to be back here in Phoenix 
I honestly really like this track for indie cars. It's a very nice track, um, very fun to race in all eras of IndyCar. DW12s, the current IR18s, and then of course these cars that we're driving. So if we're able to get green flag laps under, this should be some very fun racing, especially with the dog leg being open for all these drivers on all the laps. We had some drivers coming out pit road. It looks like it was Sharp, Scarry White, Josh Patterson. Those three drivers came down pit road. It looks like they took fuel and some damage repair as Garrett White had to get his damage fixed. And pace car pulls off, so we'll be restarting on lap four of one hundred. And someone to look, someone to look out for, Ryan Martin. He is sitting row two on the inside. So that will be interesting. Mason Suit, he said he wasn't going to make it, but he's sitting there in fourth on the outside. Coming back to the Geico restart zone. Green flag is out. Blake Kennedy gets a great jump on Ethan Harrison, and they're off and away, able to single file for the first two positions. Three wide back there, Mason Suit and Ryan Martin. Staying too wide as Jay Mulder backed out of it wisely and were able to stay green for longer than 30 seconds this time. Down the back straightaway into turns three and four they go. Ethan Harrison in second while chasing the 75 of Blake Kennedy. Mason Suit dives down to the bottom of the track. Does the crossover move on Ryan Martin. They're able to keep it clean through turns one and two. Mason Suit trying to get that third place position away as it looks like Jay Mulder and Ojaninda, they are battling there for the fifth place position. I believe No Janinda was able to get it back right on the back bumper of the 75 is Ethan Harrison to the inside and turn number one goes to 77. Side by side they go into out of turn two, down the back straight away. Ethan Harrison clears oh Blake Kennedy into the wall. Harrison had cleared Kennedy and around goes No Janinda. And caution comes out as Blake Kennedy was cleared. So the 77 of Ethan Harrison cleared Blake Kennedy. Kennedy tried to do the crossover, bit a little too hard, hit the wall. And then as they went into turns three and four, no agenda. It looks like a separate incident just lost it out underneath of Jay Mulder and went into the wall. Just a really unfortunate incident there. We saw Blake Kennedy hit the inside wall and just kind of lose it from there. As I believe it was Noah Janinda that spun around, correct? Yes, that was. It was Janinda and Mulder. Janinda was on the inside, and then it looked like a case of the car just coming out from underneath and nothing that Janinda could do except for lifting. And Turns three and four are a lift corner, but not a break corner, and I think he just spun it around. We're going to bring up the uh, replay camera here on No Janenda to find out what exactly happened. Oh, it looks like he was on. So they were side by side here. It looks like he was on the outside. I thought he was on the inside molder. But you see Kennedy hit the wall. They were able to keep it clean. They're side by side, and then, oh, maybe a little net code contact there, and then it gets plowed into by Garrett White. That so looked to be big. a very big case of Arco breaks out of Garrett A. White. Mm -hmm. Just no stopping there from the 43. So much different than I had thought the incident was, I believe. Net code was... Maybe the benefactor of that one, I would say, uh, Blake Kennedy being on the bottom and making it three wide also didn't help. But then plowed into by Garrett White, that really hurt Noah Janinda. And that's going to help Christian Visconti. He was two laps down. I believe he's going to keep out the lucky dog last time. And he could be seeing it again. So Christian Visconti, your pole sitter, one lap down in 12th, and I think he's got... He'll be able to make up some spots if he gets back on the lead lap. Visconti coming down pit road. It looks like the only driver to be coming down. 
you might as well for the number 80 as you are. You've got a long ways to go if you're Christian Visconti. And you've got a long ways to go for... before early on in the race, but you never know. But as the saying goes, you don't win the race on lap number one. And these cars are going to double file up for a restart on lap number 11. We're only one-tenth of the way through this. Still got a long ways to go. A lot of laps left. And if this turns into a race of attrition like last year's Phoenix race, where there was just caution after caution, and you just had to make the most out of the green flag laps that you had, it's going to be really key staying patient, as you said earlier, to you keeping your head in the game is going to be basically what these drivers need to do. Yeah, we're here at Phoenix, and this is relatively a short track, um, according to the IndyCar terms, and we've only completed 10 out of 100 laps. We're only one-tenth of the way done, and we've had two cautions already. Hopefully our drivers are taking and learning these lessons that they're uh, hopefully you know, learning along this race so far and just applying that to their racecraft and maybe get some green flag laps here. Ethan Harrison jumps at the opportunity the second he hits the Geico restart zone, leading Mason to full by Josh Patterson. What do you expect going from bottom to top, taking it four wide to go from fifth to second, all in turns one and two? I was about to say, Mason Suit was the one who started alongside Josh Pat or Ethan Harrison, but now Suit has fallen his way down to, I believe, fourth or fifth. As caution has come out again, I believe we've got another yellow happening in turn three. That seems like it could be the problem spot tonight. Yeah, we're going to uh, bring up our replay camera and see if we can't find out what exactly happened here. Can't really seem to find... Oh, there we oh. go. So, so we're watching here. I believe this is Brayson Collins, if I am miss, not, if I am correct. Down the back straightaway, and just hits the apron and goes around. Man. Looks like Brazen Collins just kind of ran out of talent, and then it was just compounded by the drivers hitting him. The drivers yeah. are behind him. A shame there, but I guess that's a mental note. If you're another, if you're another driver, that's a mental note to take. Don't touch the apron on turn on turns three and four because that's that sent the five of brakes and columns around and that really hurt some other drivers too i believe we had somebody some uh two or three guys plow into him i think greg roland uh hit him at the end he was breaking but it seemed like card was coming up the track nobody none of the leaders have come down pit road at all and a bunch of the other guys have. Christian Visconti, as I mentioned earlier, he is now back on lead lap. He took his lucky dog. Something I to note know. tonight compared to last season, these drivers only have one fast repair, so they only got one spare car that they can bring out in case they damage their initial car. So that's really going to play a big role in the attrition of these fields. We could potentially see an ending to this race with only one or two cars if they keep this level of intensity and destruction going. <laughs> And with the cautions honestly being so spread out through the field, and we saw how aggressive Josh Patterson was on that start, going four wide through the dog leg, going into turns one and two. If there's no, there's no question where a caution could happen. There's no question where somebody could lose, just lose the car and spin around. And with Racing Collins, he was sitting in sixth, just spins around, and then three or four or two or three guys that were riding around in the back just got caught up in it. And this has allowed other drivers to really just play it safe, play it calm, and they could be making their ways in as 
I mean, we have Bob Schumacher. He's sitting there in sixth. Greg Rowland. I thought he was involved in that last incident. Maybe I racing gave him no damage. He's sitting there in seventh. Mason Suit sitting in eighth. Christian Visconti, Blake Kennedy, they're tenth and eleventh. And as I mentioned, Visconti just got back on the lead lap after being two laps down. So if you're not Ethan Harrison, Josh Patterson, Ryan Martin, and I would say Blake Kennedy, but now he's in the back. If you're not one of those three, you might as well just take it easy. You've got you're only 16 laps in. You got 100 laps. 84 laps to go. 83 laps to go. When we go back green, you don't need to lead every lap. If you're not up front, then just take it easy. That's that would be my word of advice for the drivers right here. From on board with Ethan Harrison, we're going to take the green with him to watch what these drivers have to deal with on these starts and restarts. See, Ethan in first gear, that's really going to allow him to maximize the RPMs and the amount of tire rotation he's got, but it's uh, also a little tricky. you got to make sure that you don't spin your tires and potentially end up in that inside wall like we saw Christian Visconti do on the initial start of this race. So it looks like the key is first gear start. The second you accelerate, you're going to see the yellow lights pop up and you're going to immediately upshift into second, goes to third, spends about a few seconds in third, fourth all the way until turns two, one and two, and then he hits fifth, red lighting fifth, down the back straightaway going into sixth, and then a slight lift, downshift into back into fifth through turns three and four, and then he will be in fifth and sixth throughout the rest of the track. As Josh Patterson was side by side with Jay Mulder there, Jared Bokadowski is sitting in fourth. It's almost like he's laying in wait. Mason Suit has made his way into sixth. Greg Rowland as well. And Josh Patterson making a bold move to the inside, nearly contact with the inside wall. He's going to be side by side with Ethan Harrison through turns one and two. Down, Down the back straight away. Side by side. Ethan Harrison goes way wide. It's like he had to chase the car up there to try to save it. And Josh Patterson takes the lead. Jay Mulder sitting in second. Harrison has moved down to third the first time he's lost the lead since gaining it a few laps back. Yeah, Ethan Harrison just opened that door there. And Jay Mulder just came right on by. And you see behind Ethan Harrison, there is a swarm of angry hornets. Just waiting and just lying in wait, ready to pounce on any um, mistakes that these drivers might have up front. You got Mason Suit, Ryan Martin, Jared Bokanowski, Greg Rowland, all of those cars, it seems like they are clean and they aren't as fast on talent as these top three, but they have clean cars. And if something happens to one of these three, you might as well just kiss your chances goodbye because they will be able to be right up on you. Or it could be a caution waiting to happen. Say if you get loose, someone could plow right into you. This top three really has broken away. It's about a half second gap between Ethan Harrison in third and Mason Suit in fourth as Josh Patterson has a about a third of a second gap over Jay Boulder. And then Jay Boulder really has to keep an eye on Ethan Harrison not for long though as caution comes out. Once again on lap 23 of 100. Closing in on the one-fourth mark on today's race. Once again, we're going to pull up our GGR replay camera and take a look at what transpired to bring out this caution. So Tyson, what trends have you noticed so far in this race? as we work I to bring up this replay. I definitely noticed uh, quite a few trends as of recent. Um, none of the leaders have come down pit road yet. I believe they'll be coming down this time. Um, but I really noticed the driver that's in third or fifth on the bottom has been able to get the best start. They've been really been able to take advantage of the dog leg, as it looks like Bob Schumacher just 
bounces off the inside wall, goes from top to bottom. Really unfortunate there for the driver of the 12. He was having a solid, clean race going. As people did come down pit roads. Some drivers pitted, some drivers didn't. I believe Josh Patterson, Christian Visconti, Mason Sue, Blake Kent, E, Sharps, Collins, Janinda, all those guys pitted. I think Ethan Harrison did as well. Well, we're a quarter of the way done with this race, and some of the things I've really taken note of is just the amount of cautions that we've had. I mean, yeah, I don't believe it's as bad as last season. Uh, this might be a better setup. It might be the new track layout. Uh, iRacing recently gave us a newly updated Phoenix with the dog leg and a move forward to its real-life start-finish line. So it could be a combination of things. These drivers might be a little bit better with these uh, IRO 9 Indy cars as well. But mm. I'm kind of starting to worry that maybe we won't have many cars left in the finish. Yeah, that is starting to worry me. And when you, you did say race trends, and I didn't want to point out the direct obvious of, of course, cautions. I was looking more at the race, the racing itself. But I do agree. The cautions are a part of the racing, and this is really going to affect the finish if these cautions keep piling up because... Bob was having a nice clean race. He's now a few. Uh, he's now a couple laps down, having to take a fast repair. No Janita. He was having a solid race. He's a couple laps down now, had to take a fast repair. I believe Garrett White has exited the race. He's always a strong contender. Bracing Collins. I'm not sure where he's at on track. I believe he had to take a fast repair. So it's really just going to be interesting. A game of survival for these guys. Of who's going to be able to save their car the most, keep it clean, and still, still really keep it racy. And that's a hard task for some of these guys. And it's easier said for me than done. And it's easier said than done for everybody is keeping your car clean and still having a competitive enough chance to stay up front throughout the whole race. Well, the pace car lights are off. We're going to go green this next time. Bye. We're going to ride along on the Henry in-car cam with Josh Patterson sitting P3. Just give us a little more perspective. You know, uh, we watched Ethan Harrison take that restart from P1 last time by, and now we're going to watch from P3. See what these drivers have to deal with a little further back, but still up front. And Josh did make the four-wide move when he was starting in fifth. Uh, a few restarts back. Now he's starting in third. Jay Mulder's in front of him. Greg Rowland starting in second. Mulder, an experienced driver. He knows what it's like to be restarting up front. Greg Rowland, I'm not sure if he's restarted up front in a GGR event. So that's going to be interesting, especially for the top lane. As creeping towards the Geico restart zone goes Jay Mulder and the rest of the field. Off and away they go. A very meet, about middle of the restart zone there for Jay Mulder. As Patterson gets a great start going, he's going to use the dog like all the way down to the bottom and really try to get up underneath that 51. Drifts up the high side, goes Jay Mulder, really wasn't able to stick it out of the corner. Patterson is going to go side by side into turns three and four. We've seen Mulder have to, and other drivers, really have to lift. And Caution comes out once again. I don't see Greg Rowland. I think he might be the Caution. We are going to bring up our GGR replay camera once again. Josh Patterson with a really strong start there. Uh, we saw Jay Mulder get a little tight, and Josh was able to keep his front wing out from the wake of Jay Mulder and just make that clean pass on the inside. He yeah, looks good. Looks like there might have been some help here for Greg Roland. We're going to take a look at this replay. Side by side, Roland on the outside, Mason suit on the inside. Greg Roland in that Oreo dunk car. Looks like he had a little bit of contact from the inside and just sent him to the outside wall. Let's see if he can get it back going again here. Puts it in reverse. That is a one destroyed race car, however. Yeah. Not looking good. I believe he spun again, and I don't blame. Look, I don't blame it if the car did spin again. It looks like it has a lot of aero damage. The wheels pointed directly to the right. Not exactly where you want to be turning. 
Yeah. Spins it around once again. I believe that's from the suspension damage. So it looks as if maybe a racing deal, maybe not. Mason's suit definitely came up a little bit. Greg Rowland was trying to arc his corner and try to get a better corner exit to try to clear the 58. And the 386 of Greg Rowland was the unfortunate loser of that battle, Mason suit. Seems like he didn't have much damage. I think Greg Rowland had to reset, so that's that's a bad deal right there for the 386. As we see these cars roll off, one car rolling off pit road without a front nose must have gone through his fast repair already. A couple of these drivers taking tires, taking fuel. I believe that starts in the 92, and I think he hasn't had his front wing for quite some time. There's been quite a few times I've seen him he doesn't have his front wing. I don't think he's been racing with his front wing for at least a few laps. Maybe he has it now. But he has some flavor of damage. I think it's just Yeah, he's got a front. Yeah. I think that's just me not being able to see things in the uh, design of his car. He has a front nose now. Yeah, the nose of his car is black, and it looks like it's the, the, like the generic eye racing where it cuts it off. Well, while we're under caution, I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. Tyson and I are brand new to this Broadcasting by Ourselves game, and we appreciate you dealing with all of our uh, technical difficulties so far. And just want to say thank you. We hope to see you next week. We promise we'll get better as time goes. Getting better every week is our goal, and trying to provide the best content that we can. Last week, unfortunately, we weren't able to provide the full experience. This week could be better, but we're learning as we go, and I think I've been having fun, Q. I don't know about you. This has been this has been a fun one out of the booth. Oh, it's always fun watching a GGR race, and uh, we see that Jay, no, Josh Patterson is awarded the lead. Didn't know what the uh, timing lines, how that would all shake out, but Josh Patterson will take the field back to green. This is going to be a very interesting start. Both of these guys really good on restarts. Mulder's been able to time things perfectly. Patterson's been able to time things when he's been behind the 51. As green flag is out, oh, Jay Mulder timed it a little bit too well. He went just before the one went. He had a lift, and we have a car at the bottom of the track. Everybody swerving to avoid that really hurt Jay Mulder. He had a gap underneath the one, but now he slips in behind Josh Patterson as it goes Patterson, Mulder, Harrison, and then Bokanowski and Kennedy battle back for fourth. Yeah, that was really heads up racing out of Josh Patterson. He recognized that there was a slow car out of the dog leg and was just able to avoid it and not cause another uh, caution. Great heads up racing by all of those guys, I think. I mean,. That was the right thing to do as a driver, to be under the yellow line, but on those restarts, everybody is going everywhere. So props to everybody for not causing an accident, especially in a dangerous part of the track where it that's very blind right there, especially coming out of the dog leg where the wall really comes out and flattens. Mulder staying in the draft. A bit of a three-car breakaway already, and between that, Josh Patterson and Jay Mulder seem to really be in their own league right now, with Ethan Harrison just kind of riding them out behind in the catbird seat. Christian Visconti has made his way into fourth. He's passed Blake Kennedy and Jared Bokanowski. That's something to make note of. So Visconti does have speed, however, he's already used his fast repair. And I don't know what tire cycle he could be on. He might have taken tires at one point. Oh, we have a car around. Another great driving performance there by Josh Patterson and Jay Mulder. <laughs> they might have just had a heart attack right there. The yellow comes out on lap 37 of 100. And that was somebody around. I don't know who that was. Once again, we're going to pull up the GGR replay camera and find out exactly what happened here. Ooh. 
it's taking some time to find it. We, the program isn't picking up exactly who was spun. Oh, seem to have found it. It was Jared Bokanowski. We'll pull up exactly what happened that led to him being in the outside wall. But this is not the car that we saw spun around that Josh Patterson had to avoid. This is going into turns three and four. Bokanowski looked to make a move underneath the 70 or 75, did it instead, and just gets a love tap from Sharps, and they both go up against the wall. Yeah, it looks like he made a little contact on the apron, just sent his car for a spin. Really unfortunate. A couple cars upside down in the outside wall and the inside wall. Cars everywhere. Caution is out. We're on lap 38 of 100 here. Really glad of the safety of these cars, able to keep these drivers safe. Uh, had quite a few drivers fly up into the cash fence. And Bra I mean, Brayson Collins had a rough one last night, but we've had some scares, but these guys able to continue. Josh Patterson, Jay Mulder. We are going to see some guys come down pit road, I believe. We... It's giving Christian Visconti a lead. I don't know what's going on with that. But on lap 39 of 100, coming around to hit lap 40 of 100, it's certainly been a caution-filled race, but there's been good action up front. We've had three-car breakaways every single, I'd say every single restart, and those have been very interesting to make note of, to watch, see those happen, see those play out. Josh Patterson... One last week at Texas and a thrilling display this week. He's taken the lead and has from he took the lead from Jay Mulder and hasn't looked back. Eight cars on the lead lap. So you said Q, this is gonna be a battle of or a race of survival. No Janin to the last car on or the first car one lap down. Jay Mulder, the last car on the lead lap. It's gonna be Patterson, Harrison, Collins, Bokanowski, Visconti, Kennedy, Suit, and Mulder. Coming back to the green, Harrison. Rolling a little bit too far as they're side by side entering the Geico restart zone. Off and away they go. Har or Harrison doesn't get the best start. Collins really gives Patterson a bump to the back there. We're in IndyCar, you aren't bump drafting here. Patterson with a great start as Harrison gets a good follow through, uh, Collins had something go wrong in entering turns three and four. That allowed Harrison to have an amazing send to get back into second place. But that's allowed Josh Patterson to have a half-second gap over the driver in second place. They are battling like Hornets back there. Christian Visconti on the high side. They've single-filed out now. Visconti going underneath Collins. I believe Collins has older tires than Christian Visconti as he's moved his way into third place. Josh Patterson in the lead. Ethan Harrison five and a half or point five seconds back trying to reel him back in. Trying to get that lead back. Yeah, Christian Visconti though, he did put it on pole for the start of this race before he had that unfortunate accident on the start. So we know that that 80 Limeade Media Machine has a lot of speed uh, tonight. It's just going to be a matter of can he catch back up to Josh Patterson, Ethan Harrison, who had pulled away at the start. I believe these two have a real big breakaway, especially with Mason Sue coming out. I think Mason's going to make, going to give Visconti a run for his money. Mason gives everybody a run for their money, no matter what position they're in, whether it be lap two or lap ninety-eight. I think Mason's going to make it really tough for Visconti to hold on to this. Third place position, we're going to go on board with that 56 car. To the outside goes the 56, a very bold choice. Trying to do the crossover as Visconti slides up a little bit. Very interesting line there. 
That's going to lose suit of position as Mulder's going to go around to the 56. They're going to be side by side entering turns three and four. I'm expecting fireworks any second, though, Tyson. Mason Sweet and Jay Mulder are two drivers that are known to have a history with each other. Mm -hmm. You never know exactly what's going to happen when these two are close to each other on a track. Like holding a match outside of a fireworks factory, something's bound to explode, and you might be the unlucky bystander. I think Jay Mulder has the same thought as you, and he's trying to get away from Mason. He's going every which lane to get around this 80 car, but Mason's holding strong and staying with them, and that's really hurting how these guys are catching up with the top two as the gap is extended to a one second between third and fourth place. Holder now goes around the 80, but so does Mason Sue. Not clear yet of Christian Visconti. And... Nearly still not clear. He's still on the outside. Visconti putting up a good fight. Now the 56 is clear, regardless of the run that the 80 has out of the corner. And Suit versus Mulder, this is going to be interesting going into the turns one and two. Quick checking on our leaders real quick, as Josh Patterson and Ethan Harrison have still just maintained their gap to the rest of the field. As we return to the battle between Jay Mulder, Mason Sweet, and Christian Visconti. Oh, caution oh, is out. Oh. There was a car in the middle of the track, and Jay Mulder is not going to be happy about that. We have a yellow. That was some great racing going on. Oof. That was Ethan Harrison. Ethan Harrison wrecked from second place. I think he might have hit the apron. We're going to go to our GGR replay camera here to see exactly what happened. If you would like to sponsor the GGR replay camera, please contact Ethan Harrison. Always wanting some more sponsors to join us on board. And I think this is the same story, different book, different driver. Just hitting the apron, sliding up into the wall. I think that's the third or fourth time that's happened. And man, oh, somebody else hit the wall as well. And Ethan Harrison is very lucky that that didn't collect any more drivers. However, the one driver it did collect was Jay Mulder. Yeah, Jay Mulder will not be happy under that race car, and neither will Ethan Harrison. Uh, you know, he had a, such a big gap to the third, fourth, and fifth place that really he probably will, didn't need to push that much. I know as a driver in real life myself, I tend to overdrive things when I'm out front just because I feel like I need to be going faster. But sometimes you really just got to put it in perspective that it's time to slow down and take it easy. And, you know, Ethan Harrison, he's a great driver, and that is a very rare mistake to have out of that 77 car. Yeah, I agree, and a very uncharacteristic mistake from Ethan Harrison, especially, I think his line in that corner as well was always half a lane up from that yellow line. I don't know if that was just a different entry point that he was trying, or just over or over steered going into the corner, but he bit that yellow line and bit it hard, and then the outside wall was there to catch him. Well, let's get a mid-race info update here after we've crossed 50 laps. 48 Lap. laps to go. Seven. We've had seven cautions. We ran 20 caution laps, and we've had 10 lead changes. That's something I'm impressed with, with Ethan and the rest of the admin and crew here tonight. They've been able to get these cautions quick and easy. Only 20 caution laps after 53 laps, you tell me. You tell me in NASCAR that there's seven cautions after lap 53. You, I could have believed that you never went green. But 20 laps of caution laps has really allowed for a solid 33 laps of green flag racing. Hoping that we have some more coming here, especially with Brayson Collins, Mason Suit. It's going to be interesting with these two in the front row, but hopefully we can see some green flag racing. I think part of the issue with these Indy cars at Phoenix is just the lack of... Uh... There's really no disparity in the driver uh, talent and speed. I mean, they're pretty close together on the uh, lap pace right now. Really, no one's really pulling away outside of uh, Ethan Harrison and Josh Patterson. But the rest of the field really tight. Really no chance to get away from each other. I think it just goes to show how easy it is to just hop in one of these things and get, 
get up to speed. Maybe not have that race winning speed, but being able to be competitive as we're about to go green here. I think this restart will be quite interesting as Josh Patterson, one of the fastest cars in the, in the race, he's starting in third. I think that's the preferred spot if you're a really fast car to start in third so you can really angle it into the dog leg. Mason Suit as well, he's not exactly the best restarter, but he's going to be restarting on the outside. And then the other fast car, Ethan Harrison, took his fast repair. He's now in seventh. As Brayson Collins hits the Geico restart zone, able to time his restart perfectly. Does Josh Patterson to the outside? He goes into turn one. And Josh Patterson is able to use that preferred restarting area effectively. But here comes Mason Suit. Right on the back bumper of Josh Patterson. Going to follow him to the outside. Going into turns three and four. Brayson Collins holding the lead. Patterson to the outside, three wide for first place, Mason Sue, all the way to the bottom, all the way back up to the top, nearly clipping the five, trying to do a crossover with Brayson Collins, he wisely backs out of it, here comes Jared Bokanowski in the 78, Brayson Collins puts him in the wall, into the wall goes the 78, and caution comes out as... No, caution, yep, yep. now the caution is out. Caution is out, a little late there from the race admins, however... That was a really good uh, restart by Josh Patterson. Brazen Collins really didn't have that much tire spin off the line, but we saw Mason Sweet and Josh Patterson just stay on his rear wing and make that pass. As we go ahead and bring up our GGAR replay camera, we will find out exactly what happened. Bogdanowski had a really big run on the outside there. And... On so we're on board with Bakanowski. You can see that run all the way through turns two or turns one and two on the outside. I don't think or he was squeezed a little bit by Brayson Collins there. And then bang. Gets hit. Yeah, really just a victim of being in the wrong place at the wrong time there and just not having enough track for all the drivers. Yeah, and if they were able to honestly like keep that going, keep it green, that was some really good racing. And Josh Patterson was able to barely nose out Mason's suit there for um, the lead at the time of strike. And I think, oh, well, I guess it doesn't. I was going to say that might have screwed over the strategy for suit and Collins because it seemed like they were on a different strategy than... Patterson was as they stayed out, but they're staying out under this yellow, so I think they're holding strong with this strategy. With the cautions coming roughly every five laps, it's going to be interesting, especially if, if this trend keeps going. As you mentioned, we now have seven drivers on the lead lap. No, Janinda got his lucky dog. I think now eight, Jay Mulder has rejoined the field. But we have eight drivers still on the lead lap. Different strategies could come into play. We could see some drivers pit, some drivers not pit. Somebody stays out. And then, hey, maybe we have a green flag run to end the race, and the guy that's in the lead was the guy that stayed out. You never know. Yeah, Josh Patterson, though, he's shown the most speed, I believe, out of the rest of the field. I don't really know if anyone else has anything for him tonight. It's going to take either someone finding that little last bit of speed or maybe making a better strategy call than Josh to really cement themselves as a front runner here. I believe Mason Suit might be getting a penalty. It seemed like he crossed over the commitment line and then didn't come out and hit road. So that's very interesting. I don't know how they'll award that. Or if he'll be just yelling for a black flag clear. He'll, he'll be flying up on the outside of Josh Patterson. That's going to be your front row. Josh Patterson, Mason Suit, 1 2. Row number three, I believe that's Brayson Collins and then Ethan Harrison. Look at Ethan Harrison, took his fast repair. Now he's back up front. And then the six of Janinda, Christian Visconti in sixth. That's going to be row number three. We have drivers taking their wave arounds. Ryan Barton has rejoined the lead lap barrage 
nine drivers back on the lead lap. Josh Patterson going to lead him back down with under 40 laps to go. We've seen Josh Patterson be really strong on these uh, restarts all night. I wonder if he'll have another good one here to cement himself back out front. Collins and Patterson working together on this restart, I would assume. Going now, green flag back out. We're back underway here at Phoenix. A really good start for Josh Patterson. Really good start for Christian Visconti, it looked like. Trading paint on the tires when Christian or went Mason Stute and Brayson Collins. Mason Suit's going to fall back, and it's a hornet's nest back there. Suit's going to dive underneath the five. Suit hits the apron, and he goes around. And clips Visconti, and that's going to end Visconti's night. Oh, no. Yellow's out once again on lap 62 of 100. As the age-old adage goes, cautions breed cautions, and that's what we're seeing here tonight. Yeah, cautions breed cautions, and I'm not sure if Mason heard anybody say. I don't know if they said anything saying that the apron is not the place you want to be, but... Just Mason. like as a kid when you pretend that the floor is lava... That apron is lava tonight. You just do not want to touch it with any of your wheels. Yeah, and I wouldn't say I would say like I wouldn't say Mason touched it. He had his whole car there. He had his whole body there on the lava and that's that's just not good there for the 58 or the 56, excuse me. Yeah. Clearly not happy as it looks like he has left the session as well as the server but yeah we have some drivers coming down pit road some not josh patterson came down pit road so he's going to forego his number one position to take the lead i believe a lot of people came down pit road i'm not sure i think brayson collins is still the leader but i can't quite tell you waiting for the leaderboard to refresh So Collins, Harrison, Janinda, Mulder, Patterson. That's your top five. Very interesting top five. Um, I'm not a betting man 100%, but I'd say if we go caution, if we stay green flag racing for five laps, that number one car is going to be in first place by lap 60 or lap 70. Yeah, one of the issues, though, for Josh Patterson that he's going to work through is just the uh, the talent level. Of those cars in front of him. I mean, you know, Josh Patterson is one of the uh, premier iRacers in this group, and everyone else is, compared to him at least, just missing that little bit of extra speed. So Josh Patterson going to have to be careful working his way back up through the field, as we've seen so many cautions tonight on those restarts. And I agree, actually. Oh, excuse me. I agree with your statement, actually. It's going to be, very, it's going to be a little difficult for Patterson to get back through. However... He will be starting on that bottom lane. He's going to be starting fifth, which I mean, which I believe he will be taking the bottom lane, which means we've seen him dive bomb that dog leg twice already, maybe three times already, and he goes all the way down when he's the leader. Passing that Janenda and maybe passing somebody else could be in the books here. Yeah, Josh Patterson all night has been aggressively using that dog leg on the uh, race restarts, and I really think that's just putting him ahead of these drivers i mean it's pretty risky to go down there it kind of tears up your tires more than just running the uh what is considered the normal track line it does and it just upsets the balance of your car the suspension is really not meant to handle that kind of transfer of the weight so it's really just upsetting these cars but josh patterson has been doing it an excellent job of just putting on a clinic on those uh starts and restarts I think we're about to watch the cl another clinic yet again. Class is in session as we're heading back to the Geico restart zone. Off and away goes Brayson Collins. Green flag is back out. I don't think Collins had the best of starts. Oh, he did. There he goes. Okay. I thought he didn't have the best of starts, but off and away they go. And Janinda and Harrison staying in front. 
as Janinda goes into second now. A little bit of a dive on that of Josh Patterson to the inside of Noah Janinda. It looks like he'll make that pass. And he is now in two second. Caution is back out. Caution back out right as Patterson ekes out Harrison at the timing line. And something's up with Josh. I think he just slowed down a lot. We're going to pull up our GGR replay camera and see if we can find out what happened. So it looks like this could be on Ryan Martin. And I feel like we've seen this multiple times tonight, just drivers clipping that apron. And I, I think everybody, or at least majority of these guys have done it at least once. And they are just they're probably all kicking themselves. They're like, man, hitting that apron. It's like I said, the same book or same story, different book, different drivers. We're gonna see co drivers come down pit road here on lap 68 of 100. But all in all, the green flag racing, even though we've had our fair share of cautions, I believe we're on caution number 10. The green flag racing has been excellent. This has been some great green flag racing. We've seen some. Bunch of bunch of different drivers up front, bunch of different guys leading race, leading the laps, and with I think we have nine cars left on track, eight cars left on track. With sharps a lap down, we are gonna see. I wouldn't say one hundred percent the cream of the crop of the field as Christian Visconti had a very fast car and was unfortunately wrecked out, as did Jared Bokanowski. But we're gonna be seeing the best drivers battling it out for the win here which should make it a very fun one to watch for the rest of this race riding on board with this right front suspension camera of ethan harrison it's one of those unique views that we can get here on iRacing that is kind of hard to get in real life one of the benefits of this virtual platform even under pacing, you can see the uh, load of the tire. You can see the uh, suspension doing its work. And this is at a relatively low speed. So these Indy cars are really just built to take corners flat out or as close to flat out as possible. Low to the ground, lots of aerodynamics. Really just keeps them stuck to the track. And really, you know, it forces the driver to do a lot of work and to have a lot of commitment. And this is one of my favorite camera angles. I like watching from this camera angle. Just... Just seeing how the car is able to work, seeing how the car is able to maneuver and able to bend and flex under all the load and strain that it has. And like you said, tracks like this where the you can't take the corner nearly flat out, but it's almost like you want to. I think Gateway was the same sort of way, the race that you won last season. Gateway is sort of the same way. You want to take it flat out, but you really just can't. And that's the difference in being able to really stick the corner. And I think Collins, Patterson, Mulder, Kennedy, Harrison, those five guys have really been able to get these corners down pat. Coming to 30 laps to go in the Geico restart zone. Grayson Collins leads them down to the green flag. Diving in front of Jay Mulder goes the Five, as Mulder looked like he had a gap to make it three wide, Collins is going to put it out in front as they're side by side for second. Former teammates Josh Patterson, Jay Mulder. Patterson able to clear the 51. And here comes Blake Kennedy. Here comes Josh Patterson. Move for third and a move for first. Collins with a big wiggle up the track and. Jay Mulder really had to lift to let Blake Kennedy in. He's going to do the crossover now down to the bottom of the track. Collins stays in the lead somehow. We're going to go on board with Josh Patterson. As you see that pink car 
of on board with Ethan Harrison as we see Josh Patterson, Brazen Collins, and Blake Kennedy out in front all battling really hard for that first position. Both Ethan Harrison and uh, Josh Patterson have similar paint schemes or similar enough with that orange color. Ethan Harrison, like bit of a gain. Patterson's made his way into the first place position. Here comes Harrison, as you mentioned, with a bit of a gain. He's closed in on Brayson Collins. I think Collins has older tires than these guys, so I'm shocked at how well he was able to stay out in front. But now it's the guys with new tires. Harrison really hugging that yellow line. As it looks like we've got a four-car breakaway once again on board with, with Brayson Collins. Starting to lose the top three right here. Like you said, he's on that older set of tires. Doesn't really have that raw pace that those freshies will give him. As the top three has kind of broken away now from the rest of the field. We're going to go yeah, on thing? board with Blake Kennedy here. Just another one of our drivers up front. If we stay green here, especially with these guys up front, Bracing Collins, I would say, is in the catbird seat, depending on how many sets of tires that we have left. If these guys up front have take, used all their sets of tires, Brayson might have one more set of tires. If it comes down to a late race caution, Brayson could take a set of tires. Everybody else comes down for fuel. Brayson takes tires, drives through the field, potentially. Potentially. It depends on how late the caution is. If it's a green-white checker, then I'd say he's all but out of it unless shenanigans happens. But clearly, fresh tires are the name of the game, because I'd say Brayson is about... He, I wouldn't say he's equal, but he's up there in terms of talent of these guys in the top three. And Blake Kennedy's really trying to get that no nose into the back bumper of Josh Patterson to try to make his way around him. Is he a sparkling drink, sparkling beverage? The pink car for the 75 of Blake Kennedy. He said he didn't even know what it was when he signed on the sponsor, but it's sitting in second and it's looking nice. You can see that 75 of Blake Kennedy just kind of peeking his front wing out from the wake of Josh Patterson in that number one car. Just making sure that he gets the appropriate amount of downforce, making sure he gets that fresh air and none of that turbulence going over his wing that could cause him to lose that aerodynamic balance that really allows him to get through the corners. Josh Patterson, true. of course, running the number one after winning last season of the GGR IndyCar Series. And what Kennedy is doing, staying behind Patterson but still peeking his nose out, that's really going to be key, especially for the later stages of this race it looks like we've got a green flag run finally so lap 82 of 100 we've got 19 laps to go kennedy and harrison they just need to be calm smooth consistent and able to stay with the one car of josh patterson we're cycling through the drivers on track right now yeah, really no racing going on outside of this top three here, and especially between Josh Patterson and Blake Kennedy. Blake Kennedy, I don't know if he's just biding his time or maybe he just doesn't have the raw pace right now to get around Josh Patterson, but right now this is the only battle going on in the field. And these guys are smart. They know how to race. They know what they're doing. And they're just going to stay calm, stay cool. I think the most laps led has been locked up, so it's not like you need to fight to try to take take the crown away. And peeking the nose out under, trying to get that fresh air for Blake Kennedy is critical, but it this is not a this is not a must do move at the moment. Blake can really just chill out until about lap ninety, so I say eight laps to go, and then we'll really start to see the intensity pick up. He's able to make the nose out underneath. He's got the different line going into turn number one. I'm not sure how much it gains or loses for him exiting turn two. I think he loses a bit of a ground with his entry to turn one. But he's trying different lines, trying to see where he can get Josh Patterson to slip up. Patterson doesn't slip up often, but when he does, 
that's going to be an opportunity needed to pounce on for Blake Kennedy. Still, we only have five cars on the lead lap right now. Both Anthony Sharps uh, and Brazen Collins a lap down. Ryan Martin, 11 laps down. And Greg Rowland, 27 laps down. Those are the cars not on the lead lap that are still on the uh, track right now. As we have Josh Patterson in first, Blake Kennedy in second, Ethan Harrison third. Noah Janinda fourth, Jay Mulder in fifth. And that are those are your only cars on the lead lap right now. And... It's equally impressive to see that the longest green flag run we've had is after Mason Suit has exited the race. Not sure, I'm not saying that there's a direct correlation. We had some other incidents not relating to him. But Mason Suit exited the race. We've now had some of the best racing that we've seen thus far. Five drivers on the lead lap, probably four of the five best guys that we've seen all race. And then Noah Janinda has silently been at the tail end of the lead lap all night. He could really find himself a potentially a top four, top five at the end of the day after really being able to keep it smooth after a wreck earlier. It seemed like Brace and Collins finally did take tires, so the strategy call would have worked out if we kept getting the yellows, but the yellows stopped to flying Brace and Collins. Would have been a great strategy call. I would have loved to see that happen, but... Well, like we talked about at the beginning of this broadcast, it's really going to come down to a battle of attrition right now. We only have five drivers on the lead lap, and I think that's kind of playing into why we've had such a, uh, such a long green flag run here, is there's really just not enough drivers left to really cause cautions. And the drivers that are, that are on track, you have Blake Kennedy, Josh Patterson racing together. They aren't going to do anything stupid. They could maybe slip up. They might touch the apron, but I think they're all talking they might all be communicating with each other in some way shape or form saying oh the yellow comes out i think we might have just jinxed ourselves but the yellow comes out for a car in the wall on the back straightaway pull and this up is going to be interesting ggr replay camera here i think all rules fly out the window whatever i just said about everybody keeping it clean smooth and calm it's the 51 of Jay Mulder into the wall. Oh, no. So that was the guy that was fifth on the lead lap. He was last on the lead lap, and he was in the wall. So something catastrophic happened. Drifting up the corner, and... Oh, overcorrected, bounced off the wall. And, yeah, just stayed committed yeah. to that throttle. You got to give him props for staying committed like that. Uh, obviously, we're in iRacing. There's really no physical danger that these drivers are in. But you got to give him props for staying committed. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him that time. So it looks like this will set us up for a restart on lap 96 or 97. So a four lap or a five lap restart here with how quickly these cautions have been uh, going. And I know Brace and Colin, I mean, Sharps is ahead of him, so he'll take the lucky dog. Collins could put himself back on the lead lap with a wave around. So right now, you're going to have a really big decision to make, especially if you're Josh Patterson and Blake Kennedy, on whether or not, if you have a set lane, do you take that set of tires? Obviously, if Josh Patterson takes tires and everyone else stays out, well, that puts Josh Patterson way in the back, and that's a lot of ground to make up in such a few amount of laps. And here comes the time to make the call, I believe. Josh Patterson staying out. Does Blake Kennedy go down pit road? No. Uh -oh. Not sure if pit lane was open yet. It looks like it was. Interesting. They might not have had tires or this is just a strategy call. Very, very intriguing. And let's say, let's say there maybe was a set lane and nobody wanted to pit. Sharps is back now. Sharps is on the lead lap. He had the lucky dog, which means he can come down pit road. He can take tires. He doesn't have to take a wave around or anything. Now he does start at the tail end of the longest line, but if he's able to carve his way through the field, it's a small pack. Like look at this. Look at this. We only have we we'll only have three rows to restart here, as Jay Mulder has peeled off the track. As of Ryan Martin, they're on pit road. Yeah. Sharps. If Sharps had a set laying and he peels carves his way through the race, through the field, and 
maybe makes a run for first place. Yeah, both I'm Patterson leaders. and Kennedy both had a, a long green flag run on those tires, so those tires are going to be pretty wore out. If Anthony Sharps had a set laying and took him, I think this is his race to lose at this point. Yeah, because the 75, especially with Kennedy, it was go time for him. It was 10 laps to go. You could see he started to make some more aggressive moves, especially going into turn one, looking to the outside of turn three, when you're on the outside of turn three, your tires are scrubbing more because you're having to turn the wheel a little bit more, especially with how the how the banking is in that area of the track, very flat. So this could be interesting, and it could be Ethan Harrison and Noah Janinda could be in the catbird seat because they weren't battling. They weren't battling for anything during that nice little green flag run. So... The five this cars on the lead lap right now, sorry for cutting you off, Tyson, but the five cars, uh, Josh Patterson, Blake Kennedy, Ethan Harrison, Noah Janinda, Anthony Sharps, those are all stout competitors in the GGR IndyCar yeah. series. I wouldn't really be a betting man right now just with the amount of talent that's between those five drivers. And obviously, Brazen Collins a lap down, but get another caution, and he's right back in it. Yeah, and he might have the freshest set of tires on the track that, has, that have heat in the tires because he took tires... And that's why he was under, that's why he was laps down. Josh Patterson, Ray Kennedy, Ethan Harrison, Noah Janinda, Anthony Sharps. Those are your five drivers on the lead lap. Brayson Collins, one lap down. Geico restart zone, way on the back bumper when Ethan Harrison, not like it's going to matter. Patterson gets a great start. Here comes Janinda with another great start. Sharps, uh, something happened with Sharps. He is way off pace, so I would rule him out three laps to go here at phoenix here comes janinda to the inside of the 75 of blake kennedy i think blake kennedy might have used up some of his stuff um where did oh, go? is out i i saw noah janinda slide up the track out of the corner of my eye and i think he may have touched the apron and he might have clipped Brayson Collins too, which could end Brayson Collins' underdog run. Down the back straightaway, side by side with 75. Kennedy really gave him room, and that was very helpful for Kennedy as... Just once again, driver's making contact with that apron, sending around, and unfortunately he collected another driver. A shame there for Noah Janinda, and I believe because Brayson Collins did get incident points, I don't think he gets the lucky dog. So that's not good. So we'll only have four drivers on the lead lap, and Sharps did not get away last time. So three to go. It'll be green-white checkered. Board shows three to go. We'll be under caution for another two laps, or another lap, maybe another two, depending on... What the ad, the what race control does? I believe we'd be going straight to green at this point. I do believe that we'll only have four cars on the lead lap with one car a lap down joining them. Yep, Brayson Collins, after being involved in that. I believe because he got he was involved in the incident he does not obtain the lucky dog. Patter Patterson's going way to the bottom. We're still under yellow. The pace car still has its lights on. Patterson could be coming down to pit and Blake Kennedy just spins himself on the apron. Hopefully Blake Kennedy is able to get that restarted and refired. Doesn't lose that position if he can get back in time. Mm -hmm. Cuz you could stall the car there by spinning out especially at such a low speed. You're going at such low RPM that you could stall the car out, but now he's able to get it rejoined back up with the field. Patterson, going for two for two. Last season's champion, looking to make it perfect on the season he won last week at Texas. 
He's in the lead here at Phoenix Pace Car. Lights are out. Ethan Harrison hasn't won in quite a bit. He's looking for a victory. Blake Kennedy, the defending Phoenix race winner, he's sitting in third. That's my favorite spot right there, as I've mentioned all throughout the night. Third place is the place to be on the restart, so long as you get a good jump on the leader. And then Sharps is the underdog as well. I'm not sure what his power situation is, but he didn't seem to be under power last time. Josh Patterson leading him slowly to the line here. Only five cars remaining. This is the longest 15 seconds as a driver to be having to go pay speed under a part of the track that typically you would have gone green at by now. Inching towards the Geico restart zone. Off and away they go. Patterson with a great start. Harrison, not so much. Here comes Blake Kennedy. He is going to take second place away from Ethan Harrison. Defensive move. Defensive move by Josh Patterson to cut off that dogleg cut by Blake Kennedy. Blake Kennedy sitting in second. Will he have anything for Josh Patterson as we come to the line here? It's going to be one lap remaining. One lap to go, sponsored by Nobody. If you'd like to sponsor the final lap, please let us know. Here comes Blake Kennedy. Looking high, looking low, looking low, diving into turn one and two. Could he make it stick? Nearly does. All gets a little loose. Here comes Ethan Harrison. It's going to be a battle for second. Josh Patterson won last week. He wins this week. Two for two on the year. Josh Patterson wins at Phoenix. Ethan Harrison takes second. And Blake Kennedy with that absolutely crazy maneuver down on the apron. Tries to make it work. Doesn't. And he loses that second place position to Ethan Harrison. Wow, Tyson, that was a race, wasn't it? My goodness, that it took us a little bit to get going, but once those green flag laps were probably some of the best racing that I've seen in a while, especially that battle between Ethan or battle between Ethan Harrison and Josh Patterson. We had a battle between Brayson Collins and Jay Mulder. Of course, the one-two between Patterson and Blake Kennedy. Patterson's gonna burn it down. That was such a that was a great race cue, especially the last twenty laps. What did you think of it? Yeah, it took us a while to get there, but after we got rid of all those uh, cautions, we were able to run some green flag laps. It turned out to be a heck of a race. As we see both Brazen Collins and Josh Patterson burning it down right now. I don't know why Brazen Collins is celebrating, but he must be happy that his good friend Josh Patterson won. And as co-owner of Josh's team, I have to say... Looks like Brazen Collins' throttle might have got hung there. <laughs> I have to say, a little bit of damage to the rear of the one after the burnout. Not exactly what the team owner wants, but that's great win for Josh Patterson. Really, really showed his stuff here. And I'd say probably one of the best cars won. And Patterson takes the win half or just a four tenths of a second over Ethan Harrison. Blake Kennedy with the ballsy move in turn one and two almost worked. He finished in third. Anthony Sharps finishes fourth, last driver on the lead lap. Brayson Collins finished one lap down. His um his comeback story unfortunately could not come true. Noah Janenda sixth, Jay Mulder seventh, Ryan Martin eighth, Christian Visconti ninth. Mason Suit, Greg Rowland 11th, Jared Bonkanowski 12th, Bob Schumacher 13th, Kevin White 14th. All those guys involved in incidents earlier in the race were tired of their cars. And Patterson continues to burn it down. Well, Where's we're going to move into our interview section of the race. Hopefully we'll talk to our podium here in just a few seconds. Let's see if they're ready in the waiting room. All right, we're going to talk to Josh Patterson first. Josh Patterson, this is Quentin Haley up in the broadcast booth. Do you have a copy? Thank you, I got you. Well, Josh, you came away with the win. It took us a while to get there, but we had some green flag laps. Tell us how it was from the driver's perspective. 
Um, I don't know. I feel like we were pretty dominant all race. So, uh, you know, it was just running up front, being consistent. Um, yeah, those green f- or those caution flags at the end definitely, you know, got in my way a little bit. But, you know, it's all good. Ended up sealing the, sealing the deal in the end. Had to hold off Blake on the late send there. But, uh, yeah, driver's perspective. Um, I think a lot of people were catching the apron, getting loose uh, in there. But, you know, um, wasn't the case for us. So, you know, I was just uh, a good deal. You and Blake had a very good battle there for the la- once you guys finally had a green flag run to showcase your stuff. Blake was really looking high, looking low, trying to get around you. I think I'd say with ten laps to go, he was really trying to push it before the caution came out for Jay Mulder. What was your thought process there, especially because that was the first green flag run over five laps that you guys had had all day? What was the thought process there? Try not to waste your stuff. Did you have a set of tires laying, or what was what was your guys' deal there? Uh, yeah, I had a set of tires laying, but I wasn't really focused on using them. Um, I was actually fuel saving that whole run. So I was trying to keep him to a gap where I knew he couldn't pass me, but, you know, stay in front of him and try to save as much fuel as possible. I think a, a one or two more green white checkers there, I probably would have run out, but, uh, you know, got it to the end and, uh, like, ended up staying behind me. I'm not sure what happened. Did he? Uh, where did he finish? He finished third. He made that. Ballsy right. move down on the apron and just lost to Teeth and Harrison coming to the line. That's right. Yeah, no, it was definitely fun racing him. Uh, he gave me, uh, you know, he kept me honest there through the uh, closing stages. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun with him. Well, Josh, congratulations on your win. Is there anyone you'd like to thank tonight? Oh, uh, yeah, I got to thank everybody at Dynamo Designs, or Dynamo Designs, Dynamo Racing, powered by Limeade Media. Limeade Media itself, Tyson. Uh, I got to thank Vulture Racing Engines, Belfort Property Restoration, DVC Automotive, the Keystone Corner. Uh, Patriot Clutches, uh, and everybody who helps me out week to week, uh, you know, to get through these races. I got to thank uh, Ethan for putting on the league, Q, you and Tyson for broadcasting for us tonight and for the rest of the season, hopefully, and uh, everybody for coming on track tonight and giving me a great race. Well, that was Josh Patterson with a dominant victory tonight. We're going to bring in our next interviewer, which was Ethan Harrison, finished second. Ethan Harrison, you're in the broadcasting booth. Do you have a copy, sir? Yeah. Well, Ethan, it took us a while as I talked to Josh. We uh, eventually long. got we eventually got those green flag runs we were wanting. How was it from your perspective? Well, it was fun when we were racing, but uh, soon we were under caution for half the race. Um, I mean, it's whatever. I, I, I don't know what the deal with Phoenix is. We've been to two different versions of Phoenix. <laughs> They've both been horrible. I, I don't know what it is. It's not hard. It's full throttle. <laughs> I mean, it was great racing, honestly, when we were under green. It was. It, it was really great was. racing. I think the main problem, and I, I saw you do it as well, unfortunately, it was the apron. Apron was just killing you in turns three and four. And I'd say about 90% of the cautions were just coming from that. At what point does it just start to get frustrating, especially when you know you've got a fast car and then you just nick the apron and then you're off for the ride? Honestly, I, I, I my, my thing was just like a, you know, I was following Josh and I, I was talking to someone and I lost focus. But the other guys, I can't say the same for. I think they're just not good. But you know, we were fast, definitely second fastest, I believe, honestly. Um, and so we ended up about where we deserved. But well, I mean, it was fun. It was a fun race. Well, congratulations on the second place, Ethan. Is there anyone that like to think tonight? Uh, I want to thank mm, Kroger, Quentin, Quentin, and Tyson for broadcasting this, and uh, Blake Kennedy for sitting in the call with me the entire time, and Visco because he sat there too, and we laughed at everyone. It was fun. <laughs> Well, congratulations. And, and I have one more. Okay. I, I want to thank Bob <laughs> for showing up, even though he was, and I quote, eight beers in. Sorry, sorry. I messed up. 30 beers in. He, 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 raced, pretty, he raced pretty good, pretty clean for a short while of time. He, does. he did. He, did. Up to, he was up to fifth place at one point, so that's pretty impressive being 30 beers in. But congratulations on second place, Ethan. We will see you next week. Have fun, guys. That was Ethan Harrison. We're going to move on to our third place driver, which was Blake Kennedy. 
Blake Kennedy, this is Quinn Haley. Do you have a copy? Yes, sir, I do. First off, Blake, I want to say that was one of the coolest moves I've ever seen with that dive bomb. I mean, that was the epitome, as Justin Haley would say, of hashtag see you on the other side. What was going through your head with that maneuver? I mean, I was going to do that maneuver no matter what. Um, I was toying with it in practice, uh, practicing with Ethan and Christian there. You know, running that line actually wasn't much slower. And it helped set up a crossover. It wouldn't really pass, but I just, there wasn't just enough time. I tried it anyways, but. If it went green that whole way and I had my runs and I was on his bumper like I was, whatever, with 10 to go, I mean, it would have worked. But, you know, that's that was stuff that I learned and I, I tried it anyways. And it just didn't happen to pan out that way. Uh, I mean, that was some great racing, especially the last 20 laps from lap 70 to lap 90. You guys were just going back and forth. And I saw you moving in and out trying to make moves when that caution came out did you have a set of tires laying and do you think it would have made a difference at all for the last few restarts or were you not focused on that and just trying to get the win set of tires that like uh i think it was lap 64 or somewhere around there which i think was i had the freshest tires of the top five um most people didn't take tires this race there wasn't much tire wear but i liked splitting into thirds almost so um, I, I really don't know how much a factor that played, but I think just that wasn't really the greatest on restarts, and that's kind of what killed me here. All right. Well, congratulations on your third place finish tonight. Is there anyone you'd like to thank? Um, I want to thank you guys for broadcasting, and I uh, want to thank Tyson specifically for Miami Media and everything he does for this league and sponsoring myself. Um yeah, and that's it, really. All right. Well, congratulations on your P3 finish. Hope to see you next week. Thank you, guys. We have one additional interview tonight. That is the five machine of Brazen Collins. Brazen Collins, you're on the broadcast booth. Do you have a copy? Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, Brazen, you asked to be interviewed, and I'm um, not one to turn down some more air time so what do you have to say for yourself uh well you know uh dark horse racing uh you know they didn't actually want to haul the car out here they were really reluctant to let us race ggr they said it was uh a little bit uh you know they, they said that we didn't have the budget for ggr we have to focus on our playoff run over in the work dynamo designs national series but uh dark horse racing allowed me to bring uh one of will power's old indy cars um from his mooresville shop at the gopro motorplex in mooresville just in case i didn't say that the first time it's in mooresville um, so, you know, we brought this thing out there. We slapped a 5 on it. Um, I thought there was still a 12 on it. Apparently not. And, uh, you know, um, she went out here and raced. Uh, I don't know how we got a top 5. We really shouldn't have. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't steer the whole race because Anthony Sharps doesn't know how to lift. I mean, you, you want to talk about a guy who was just on the gas. Like, he saw me sliding. I had that thing saved. I had it locked down. Like, we were not going to have a yellow. And my guy, I, I watched the replay. My guy gassed it up. He, he was, he, he got faster as he progressed towards me. So, you know. Glad we could race with him for, uh, you know, nothing at all because I was stuck a lap down. Because, um, you know, we had a thousand cautions and I hit on like lap 50. And I thought I was going to have enough field to make it to the end because uh, we don't know what a green flag run is. But unfortunately, uh, we ended up finding the green flag run at the end. And uh, so I ran out of fuel. But, you know, it was fun racing. Uh, you know, I just kept diving it down to the inside wall. I had steering damage the whole race. So my goal was to just like block Josh and Ethan and Blake. I don't even know how I led as many laps as I did. Um, Ethan stole a lap lead from me, so he clearly rigged the race um, in his favor because he stole a lap from me under caution, passed me under caution very cleanly. It was very upsetting. And, uh, you know, Blake, I don't know how he lost second. I mean, he just sent the dive on Josh, but apparently when you have a, a lap to make a move, you don't ha have enough time. So that's all I got to say about this race. You know, it was great for everyone to uh, let me run this thing under caution. Really gave me a, a nice breather after going and running some green flag laps in some other leagues. So, uh, you know, hopefully... This league never goes back to Phoenix again. Apparently, this is a cursed racetrack for this uh, entire organization, and it's uh, going to be the first track added to a blacklist for this league. So, uh, very excited to uh, uh, leak that detail from the administration team here in GGR that Phoenix is no longer going to exist 
And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to next week when we go to Watkins Glen and we'll, we'll have nine cars and hopefully not one of them lifts. Um, and we can just, you know, have another wreck fest so I can just keep getting run over and still getting up top five. All right. Well, congratulations to Brayson Collins on that uh, top five finish. Tyson, before we end this broadcast, you got uh, anything you'd like to say? You know, you got to hand it to Brayson. He talks. He does <laughs> indeed talk. It doesn't stop talking. No. <laughs> but it's wow, cool. I don't know if he took a breath that whole entire, uh, you know, little know. interview segment. <laughs> but he's 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 used to it. Um, but yeah, all in all, um, I don't know what it is about this track. It must be a cursed track because that was honestly, if you take away the caution laps, and I know it's physically impossible to do so. If you take away the caution laps, we had probably some of the best racing that I've seen in GGR as a whole. There was great racing up front. Obviously, we had some stupid wrecks where people hit the apron 17 times and caused the yellow. Mason suit existed. You know, things happen. And at the end of the day, that was a great 20 lap run that we had but with the battle between Josh and Blake. And we had a nice green-white checkered to end the race. Josh Patterson getting the win, going two for two on the year. All in all, if I could forget the cautions, I would, but it's Phoenix, so the cautions are forever going to stain this race, and it pains me to say it that this was just another GGR race. It was shaping up to be a great one, but unfortunately, just another race, and I'm excited for next week. I'm hoping Watkins Glen can be a fun one. Yeah, just to reiterate, we saw a lot of potential out of these drivers. We had some really good green flag racing at terrible that it was kind of marred by all those caution laps but moving on to Watkins Glen the first road course of this uh, season two of the GGR IndyCar series for Tyson Gifford I'm Quentin Haley this has been a GGR TV broadcast we'll see y'all next week